G'day, I just got a new mini lathe. Uh, I haven't had one of these before or used a lathe before. Uh, so I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm, uh, next video I'm going to have a look at just uh, getting this, setting it up, cleaning it, uh, making sure it's running smoothly. Uh, that's about all I'm going to get into the details of actually using the mini lathe. Uh, I'm an absolute beginner. Uh, a lot of people on YouTube have a lot better videos than I can produce on uh, these mini lathes, so I'll leave it to them. So other than just uh, setting it up, uh, that'll be the one video I do on the actual mini lathe. But what I want to do is set up a stepper motor to turn this lead screw here so this carriage goes backwards and forwards. Uh, normally you'd use the gearing and the head here to do that, uh, but that's kind of complicated to get the gearing right and uh, these gears don't mesh that well anyway, so uh, I'd rather avoid using the gears and the head for moving the carriage. Um, so I'm thinking I can attach a stepper motor here and have a variable speed control to move this carriage over the work. So when I'm doing turning, I get in a smooth finish by having a constant speed across that the carriage is moving, uh, but not using the gears. Uh, in that case, the only time I'll probably use the gears is if I'm doing uh, threading and I can't see myself doing that anytime soon. So this video, uh, let's have a deeper dive into stepper motors while well, I learn a bit about how you use a stepper motor and how you can control the speed, uh, work out what torque I need to make sure that the stepper motor can actually smoothly move this uh, lead screw and the carriage on it. And uh, like I said, the next video will be a bit more detail about getting this lathe and cleaning it up initially and then I'll get back into the, setting up the stepper motor uh, and working out how I'm going to design it and attach it to the lathe here and hopefully show it's working. So probably three or four videos in total about this lathe. I'm interested in learning more about stepper motors, so I got this combination of uh, Amazon. It all comes as one package, so it's a, a NEMA 17 stepper motor. Uh, it'll get me going for seeing how powerful they are and how you run them. And it came with this TB6600 controller, which is a co fairly common controller that you use with these stepper motors. And you see here, basically it takes uh, a voltage and ground in that's going to be passed on the stepper motor, so that's your high current uh, voltage. Uh, has the output for the coils on the stepper motor. And then has these three inputs from your microprocessor, and they're up there isolated so you don't have to worry about uh, uh, the current that these are drawing uh, and has an enable pin, has a direction pin where you can change the direction of the motor and then the actual pulses that are going to move the stepper motor one step each time it gets another pulse and there's also some switches on the top of this you can see here and there's two sets of switches so the first set uh, changes the number of uh, uh, pulses per revolution and the second one is the current that's sent to the stepper motor and we're going to find out how this works. Yeah, this is a rough view of how things are going to be connected up while I'm testing out the stepper motor and getting it working with a Pi Pico. So this is a picture of a Pi Raspberry Pi Pico. I'm going to connect up a rotary encoder to that just to be able to have a a value for the speed that I'm going to send to the uh, stepper motor. Uh, I'll show you a little bit of the code of that, but I've uh, gone through using the rotary encoder in other videos. Uh, and then three lines out of the Raspberry Pi are going to control the actual stepper motor. And uh, that's done via this micro step driver, which is a TB6600. Uh, so the three lines that are going to control that are one line to enable or disable the, the motor, uh, one line to uh, to set the direction of the uh, of the motor, and then the final one's this pulse line, and uh, depending on the frequency of that pulse will be how fast the motor runs. And the micro step driver is doing a lot of the smart things underneath the hood to actually synchronize and sync up the coils on the motor so that it moves in the right speed in the right direction, does all those things. So otherwise the motor is connected through, through four wires, uh, uh, two for each of the coils and the 
motor to drive the motor and this micro step drive also needs a fairly high amperage and voltage uh, power supply to independently uh, drive the motor. The nice thing about this driver is it uh, completely separates what's going on with the motor and the higher currents from the Raspberry Pi Pico and it's actually opto isolated so it should be completely separate from from the microprocessor so uh, shouldn't have any risks of uh, blowing out the microprocessor. Let's have a look at the program I'm using for uh, testing out the stepper motor. Uh, so this is pretty simple. Um, import some modules. The main one I'm importing is this rotary IRQ. Again I've used that in other projects to be able to get values off the rotary encoder. Uh, and uh, I've got two output pins, or three output pins, one for the direction, connected up to direction pin on the motor controller, the enable pin for turning the motor on and off, and the pulse width modulation output. So that's going to give the stream of pulses that will control the speed of the motor. I'm going to set some variables. Uh, so set the direction pin to zero, the enable pin to one, which the high value is means it's disabled and initial frequency for the pulse width modulation to a hundred hertz. I'm going to set the duty cycle to 50% so this is half of uh, uh, 2 to the 16. Set up the rotary encoder and then I'm going to print out that I'm st the application starting and then I've just got a tight loop here where it runs around and uh, checks the value of the rotary controller every 50 milliseconds and then sets the motor if the value changes uh, to the new speed. Um, so there we see it testing the new value against the old value. If there's a change then it updates the, the old value uh, for checking future changes. I just uh, print out uh, what the rotary encoder value is. It's going to be between uh, 0 and 100. I'm going to do some division here to get the pulse ratio to get it uh, uh, the motor turning at a known speed based on uh, the number of steps that I've set the uh, stepper motor controller to. And then uh, there's just some conditions here to check uh, if the if the value is greater than zero, then it's uh, going to work out the new and set the new pulse width modulation frequency based on our ratio and what the value is. Uh, again, setting the duty cycle to 50%. Again, testing if the new value, in this case not absolute value, is greater than zero, then it's going to uh, enable the, the, the driver. So down here, if the uh, this rotary encoder value is zero, it disables the 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 motor, and that way it doesn't use power when it's uh, set to zero, and then sets the the direction to one if it's a positive value. If our rotary encoder value is a negative value, and I should have said back there that it's going to be between negative one hundred and positive one hundred. Uh, then again it's going to enable the the driver and the stepper motor but this time it's going to set the di the direction to zero so if it's a negative value the direction is going to be the opposite direction to a positive value and then it just goes to sleep and it goes around in that loop so a very simple way of just controlling the motor by setting the pulse width modulation to the required value and the enable in the direction value lines uh, to appropriate values depending on whether it's a positive value or a negative value or if it's zero just disable uh, the motor. I'll test out my little Pico program. I'm using the oscilloscope to watch the output of the PWM pulse width modulator. And I have a couple of LEDs to mon monitor the direction and the enable pins. Now set this up. 
and put the oscilloscope into auto mode. So currently at setting of three, we're getting a frequency of 123 hertz. Let's pop this up to 50%. Reset auto. Still get a square wave frequency of 2000 hertz, which is what I calculated. Um, the enable light is on uh, because it's uh, something other than zero frequency, and the green uh, direction light's on. If we go back the other direction, go back down to zero. So at zero, the enable light goes off, so it disables the, the driver. Uh, and the direction light's off. Now if we go to the negative direction, and re-auto it. So I've got a setting of minus 11 on the encoder. Works out as 400 and 38 uh, hertz gain still the square wave. So that looks like it's doing the right thing, turning the right uh, lines on. So we should be able to connect up the driver now. So I've got this all set up uh, with the uh, motor, the Pico controlling the motor controller here. I've got 24 volts coming in, and this is set up for about 2 amps. It will deliver at maximum current. Uh, so let's try to turn it on. We'll just put it on one. You can see it's popped up to 0.3 of an amp. Let's put it right up. Seventy-five percent. That's a hundred percent, and it's drawing about just over half an amp. Let's go back down, and we see when it's gone back to zero, the motor is no longer enabled, so it goes down to 0 0.016 amps. So, hardly drawing anything, probably just the Pi Pico, and then we can see can turn both directions as the rotor encoder goes through plus and minus zero. I'm planning on attaching the stepper motor to the end of my lead screw, so that's a 14 millimeter hex nut there, uh, so I need to turn that with the, the motor. Uh, I've got the carriage engaged with the lead screw, uh, so I set up this little measuring <laughs> process, so I just put a, a socket on there, uh, I measure 15 centimeter out from the center of the lead screw uh, and I'm just using a luggage uh, luggage uh, wire to measure the pounds that I need to pull to turn the lead screw. I'm getting about 0.6 of a pound. I fed these numbers into a torque calculator I found on the web comes out as 0.4 newton meters of torque required to turn the lead screw. Here's the plan for the using the stepper motor to run the lead screw on my lathe. Uh, so this is kind of not to scale uh, drawing I did of it. So this is the lead screw, so the threaded part here and then on the end of the lead screw is a hex nut. Uh, that's 14 millimeters. Uh, so I thought I can couple to that using a quick change uh, 40 millimeter hex shank and I'll show you a picture of that on Amazon and that has a, a 6.3 millimeter uh, hex shaft on it or quarter inch uh, shaft on it 
I'll be able to use a lathe to turn that down to make it a circular rather than a hex and I'll use that to go into a, a coupler that will go from 6.3mm uh, down to 5mm couplet which is the diameter on the motor here. So the motor will go like this. We'll have the coupler, we'll have the quick change shank and that will couple onto the end of the, the hex uh, nut on the lead screw here. Um, I did a check on how much uh, torque it's going to take to turn this lead screw. I think this motor should be able to support that. Uh, worst case, if it doesn't, then I'll swap this out with a geared motor. To, but I still want to keep it fairly small. So I think it's still a, uh, this is a NEMA 17 motor. So I think uh, this will either work like this or else I'll get a geared version and you can get different gearing on it because it doesn't need to go that fast and uh, I'll also put this on a sliding bracket so I can slide it in and out so uh, I think in most cases I don't think I'll be using the the gears on the lathe to turn the lead screw but if I ever do then I want to be able to pull this out to decouple this uh, this 14 millimeter hex connected to the end of that and then push it in when I want to couple it um, I think they'll fit on the end of the lathe so the end of the lathe will be like this I think I can drill some holes into the end of the lathe put some sort of L bracket on there to hold both the motor, the sliding mechanism and the uh, control box for the uh, stepper motor and the Pi Pico controller there, rotary encoder just like you saw in the, the breadboarded example and probably put an OLED up there to uh, show me the number of rotations per seconds I'm doing on the on the lead screw that way I can uh, once I've got good settings for different type of material for moving the carriage on the lathe, I can just dial it in with the rotary encoder. Hey, I hope this video was useful. Uh, I learned a bit about stepper motors. Um, and so, like I said, the next video is going to be about uh, setting up this lathe. And then I'll get back into actually uh, building the stepper motor part and working out how to attach it to the lathe and uh, doing a little demo of uh, how it works. So I'm guessing probably three or four videos to get through that.